you die. But let's get a play by play. We'll have you take them in phases so you get to build up your tolerance for the grand finale. So to start off we have phase one. We're gonna start you off with a little bit of salvia to get this experience going. Once it hits your system, you will feel a transient psychoactive effect. You may begin to see hallucinations and begin to enter a dissociative state. But there's no time to forget who you are when you must forget that you even exist as you down a handful of shrooms. The hallucinations amplify and you may immediately have a bad trip as these two chemicals mix in your brain. Luckily, you have something to take the edge off this psychological nightmare. That being a freshly rolled joint prepared by some shadow figure chanting your name. You think the magic spice will calm you down and bring you back to reality, so you take a few puffs. Welp, now you're tripping out and you're high. Good job. You realize the only thing you can do now is to take a strength potion and push through. But you are still tripping, so what you actually took was steroids. Mm -hmm. These mostly do nothing as most steroids take days to have an effect. But the placebo effect is real, so you muster this fictitious strength to make it into phase two. If you knew what was good for you, then you'd probably stop ingesting substances by now. But the Kush is giving you the munchies, and for some reason, these drugs look eerily similar to candy. You down both MDMA and LSD tabs oh, instinctively man. without any further thought or consideration. You realize, though these substances look like candy, they don't taste like candy, and you soon begin to understand why. Your world is spinning, thoughts are racing. Are you dead? Is this what dying feels like? Why do we have two pairs of teeth when we only chew one food? Nothing makes sense yet your brain is more connected. How is this possible? Well, the MDMA is making you paranoid as it mixes with the other chemicals that were ingested. Your heart rate would increase, you'd become anxious, followed by cold sweats and mass confusion. The LSD on the other hand will bring you a greater sense of clarity while also experiencing visual distortions. And you're already hallucinating so it's hard to tell who invited who in this party going on inside your head. But hey, it is a party. Might as well kick up two feet and chug some lean while taking some Xanax. These next two drugs individually are enough to sedate you potentially for good. However, when paired, it's very probable that your heart rate or breathing will slow to a lethal level. So to keep you alive will ensure you take just enough to feel the other effects. Those effects are that of relaxation, tiredness, slowed movements, and loss of coordination. Your body is now properly sedated while your brain is literally trying to process anything into a cohesive thought. But the party isn't over yet, not until you light up a cigarette, inhale that sweet nicotine, and dissolve into the couch. By now, you wouldn't feel anything at all. Your nervous system will be overloaded with misfiring signals in the brain. Meanwhile, your ego will have evaporated into thin air and you will be fading in and out of consciousness. In one of these blips of faint awareness, you reach out for anything that can aid you. Unfortunately, the only thing you managed to grab was Kratom. In high doses, Kratom can cause nausea, constipation, and increased urination, which you do not want while you're already short-circuiting. Ideally, you'd want to take the low dose, which increases your alertness and physical energy. So you pop one in the chamber and wait for the effects to kick in. But wait. You didn't read the label, not to be taken with other substances. Ah, great. When Katama is combined with other drugs, it can lead to a risk of seizures or slowness of breath. At this point, your body will be doing anything it can to purge these impurities from your body. It's not unlikely that you will be vomiting uncontrollably at this point. This is your body unconsciously trying to protect you from, well, yourself. But we know better than our body, so you persevere until you reach phase three. After taking all of these substances, you probably think that you're invulnerable. Well, I assure you this is not the case as you haven't even taken half the drugs on this list. It only gets worse from here and to prepare yourself for the pain, you down some 99 proof alcohol. This pretty much incapacitates you and you most likely will start vomiting again. We have a lot more to go through so we're gonna speed through these drugs like it's a late night in Miami. The hallucinations stop fighting over control of your mind, slap you back to consciousness, and begin giving you doses. Heroin, morphine, meth, PCP, N-bomb, and bath salts. The heroin slows down your already failing brain, lowers your body temperature and breath. You nearly die. Morphine, numbs the pain that you already can't feel. Meth, a small portion of you feels exhilarated. You can stall on Breaking Bad now. Just kidding, you're an addict. PCP, low doses, you're numb. Large doses, audio hallucinations, and now you're angry. N-bomb, more hallucinations. Bath salts, you'd experience a massive headache, heart palpitations, nausea, as well as cold fingers. Also hallucinations. Is that it? Are we done now? Finally, we'll let's celebrate by mixing cocaine, ketamine, and fentanyl and taking them all at once. As you introduce these final substances into your bloodstream, your already faint grasp on reality dims. 
You slowly fade out of what little consciousness you had left as your hallucinations wave goodbye. This is the end. Phase 4. Grand Finale You wake up in an unfamiliar hut. You're given an unknown fluid and told it would help. Being a numb, nearly hollow corpse, you are unable to refuse. After you sip, you slip back out of consciousness. You wake up next to some extra-dimensional being. You realize it was ayahuasca that you drank. The being is giving you a lecture about moderation and the effects of substance abuse on you and the people around you. You ignore this loser. You're on a mission. You take what you think to be concentrated DMT and have the trip of an eternity. DMT is released upon death and you experience everything. You think this means you get to come back and try again, this time more cautiously. Not a chance. This near-death experience is your last and you die eternally. In weary surroundings and a foreign space, your life is over. No more second chances. That's all I have for this video. Stay sober, stay cool, and don't do drugs.